So, first of all, his breathing. At times, he actually rocked like this. Well, that's what people do when they actually their diaphragm is jammed and they've stopped breathing altogether. This is not a sign of happiness. In fact, happiness is a bouncing diaphragm. So it's definitely not stiff. Laughing is a bouncing diaphragm. Um, then he clearly breaks his sentences in the middle of the sentence, which shows again that the air is not flowing in his body. I don't see it as cutting at all. Uh, and, and it doesn't make sense to say, I have never be, been happier um, and not to breathe. So uh, then, of course, we get the sealed mouth and the jaw. So his bottom teeth are coming, meeting his front teeth. The lower jaw is sticking out constantly. And what we're getting then is an S, that sort of attacks very aggressively every time he says an S. Um, he then, with his mouth closed, is sticking his tongue out. Now, sticking your tongue out if your mouth is open uh, is a sexual gesture. However, if your mouth is closed, mm, and at times it comes right out of his mouth, it's a kind of a self-placating gesture, but it's anxiety is what it is. It's a very unusual thing for someone to do. Um, he also, the left side of his mouth goes up. I think it's the left side, which is a sign of contempt. And he, he meant, does that quite often when he mentions um, uh, William. Um, there is no smile, a couple of little bursts of sarcastic laugh. And his, his head is stiff. This is defensiveness. When we get defensive, we jam on it, jam on it, and it stiffens the head, and his head is stiff. This is the incongruence that, for me, says sadness. Here's the tip. There is no truth. You know, there's only our own perspective. He talks about my father came in and he didn't hug me, put his hand on his knee. Well, you know, my father died at exactly the same age. And my mother walked down the hall and said, your father's dead. And then walked away. You know, people are in their own state of shock. And one needs to ask what was going on for King Harry on that day, not it was all about he doesn't hug, he's not, you know, he makes assumptions about everyone else's body language, depending on his um, response. And it's, it's not truth, it's fact is all we're interested in and not truth. So I think one of the greatest naiveties there was the dog bowl. I, personally, I've had incidences where you, you push someone away and they're off balance and they fall. And it, it's awful because it looks like aggression. But, you know, one is off balance to, to fall like that. He has to take responsibility. But then the fact that he falls on a dog bowl, you know, a dog bowl. And the, the psychology of dog, you know, and not only that, broke the dog bowl. It's even worse than dog bowl. It's a broken dog bowl. And the fact that he tried to hide this, but then he had to tell Megan, she had to tell because she said, Harry, what's wrong with your back? Um, you know, I had to tell her. This is ridiculous dramatization of a situation. That it just, he was a bit off balance. He knocked you over. He knocked me over. Um, I landed on the dog bowl. You cut your back. Yeah, I cut my back. I didn't know about it at the time. But um, yeah, he, he apologized afterwards. It was a pretty nasty experience, but... He asked you not to tell anybody, not to tell Megan. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't have done. I didn't until she, until she saw on, the, on my back. She goes, what's that? I was like, uh, what? I actually didn't know what she was talking about. And I looked in the mirror, I was like, it's a dinner party stopper. If I were to say some of the things that he'd said, you know, suddenly he said, my father never hugged me. Everyone goes, right, okay. Um, you know, that's pretty self-indulgent. Um, and I, it, it's like we all, I, I, I read something on the internet where a lady said, I had arguments with my brother and my sister. I get to school and say, don't come anywhere near me. Name me a person who hasn't had that experience. Um, everybody does. But the fact that he believes that these are just his experiences and, and doesn't, hasn't grown up to realize, oh, this is the psychology of youth. This is what happens. One feels that his mental state is stopped at about puberty, um, 13. So it, it um, yeah, it's sad. It's sad, it's naive, and it's self-indulgent, which may be, gee, not that clever to have connected with the rest of the world. 
I want to say, you know, in my in my worst psychoanalytical mode, that he described the situation of him flying the Apache um, aircraft and there were screams of people wanting to help below. The man is living in that Apache helicopter. He's no longer in the Apache helicopter, but he, obviously his life is in a, an Apache, or an imaginary Apache helicopter, where he said he had four radios coming in at any one time. Yes, dealing with all of that. Hearing the screams of the people who need help. And the person who needs help is his mother, clearly. He hasn't been able to get over that. And then he's manifested his mother into Megan. So Megan, is the one who's screaming out and the rest of the world needs him to rescue. He's flying that Apache helicopter, listening out to the screams for help, radio in his ear, and he's right there killing people. How anybody could be as stupid as to say they'd killed 25 Caliban. Taliban is beyond my belief. And then to make the statement, my family's security is my major priority. Which bit of this is incongruent? Everything about Meghan is... Diana for him. She is Megan and she studied it and she's able to play that role and he sees her as beautiful, victimized by the media, chased. Um, she is Diana. She's the embodiment of Diana for him. Look, silence is a betrayal, the media, all of his language. He doesn't come across as that clever, that intellectually in tune. And all of his language is language that are repeated words from somewhere else. You know, healing, the balls in the court, um, the British press, a dragon. Um, you know, the, I don't know. Everything he says, one feels he's repeating back. I don't watch Game of Thrones, oh, but, there's okay. def but there's definitely dragons. And that's, again, the third party, which is the British press. Everything's a risk within it that is not thought out. And one imagines his life, I can see, surrounded by reality TV producers. And we all know reality TV producers are a special breed. And they have sections of their brain removed that says this is ethical. And they'll go for it. And they're going, Harry, tell that one. Harry, tell that one. With no thought for the repercussions for him, for his mental state, and he's been led down the garden path.